So hello everyone, my name is Ezequiel Castaño. Uh, I'm coming from Argentina, the National Technological University. Um, this is more or less a proof of concept of a new domain for hybrid Bayesian networks. So first of all, let me introduce the outline for today's presentation. So first we will introduce the motivation and the problem formulation. Then which model do we exactly use? So the model specification. Then we will move to the results. And finally, some conclusions and future steps. Let me say uh, right from the start that all the code for the figures and even the data collection are provided at the end of the presentation. So if you want to reproduce the work, it is already possible right now. So first, let's talk about the motivation and the problem formulation. The idea behind this research is to identify some change point in time where the audience behavior changed. So uh, that could be uh, either increasing, decreasing or changing trends, whichever behavior that the audience had before the, a particular change point, and it's different after the, that same uh, change point. Right now, we are working with a constraint scenario where we are only considering one change point. Uh, one an additional constraint is that this problem is framed in really sparse data sets. So we are working with very few data points and the data between the data between those two points is really sparse. So we don't have big data in this case. And the idea behind this is to get new insights from what, uh, at least by a human, there are no visible uh, patterns or changes. So for achieve this goal, we selected a stable YouTube channel. So this is an educational YouTube channel called Infinite Series. It's mostly about math. And the idea is that this channel is already shut down. So there are no new videos coming. And this, re this is really important because it, uh, makes, uh, it means that the data we have right now will be more or less the same in the future. Uh, and there won't be any influence from new videos into the old ones. We will consider some basic variables, namely the views, the likes, the dislikes and the comments to try to train or fit the model we propose. The idea is to do as least pre-processing as possible or leave the data as untouched as possible so that the model can learn from the very raw data what the how the audience uh, wants or uh, how it behaves. So the basic methodology was to collect some data, then do some basic exploratory data analysis, and if the results were good enough, we go to the model specification, and in case some validation metrics are met, we can continue with the inference and some visualization. A key component of all this research is the interpretability of the results. So we are not, work, we are not working towards a good uh, accuracy or a good um, or a low error, but rather to be a, being able to interpret properly the model and the parameters of that model. So that being said, what had we done for the basic exploratory analysis? So first of all, in YouTube, we have the so-called viral videos phenomena. And this means that some particular videos got a lot of attention, immensely more than the rest of the videos. So if we just look at the box plot of the data, we can clearly see here that we have three videos in this channel that went viral. And these accumulate most of the variance of the whole data set. So right now we are dealing with the constraint scenario, so we will simply remove those points. And it's left as a future work to being able to incorporate those in the same model. Here we can see the same box plots, but with those points removed. And the spread is more similar to what we will ex expect from the data. Then we check the correlation between the variables. In this case, uh, the correlation was really high more than 0.5 in all the possible combinations and therefore we decided that we will go only with the number of views. This was uh, selected or the, the number of view was chosen because it's the easiest to interpret and it's also the number that presents the most variability. So it will give 
both advantages to the interpretation and also to the model to be fit. Um, in a future step, we will also consider how to incorporate more complex variates. Finally, we will use the time series. Uh, we plot the time series to see whether a human can detect some change point. So this is a completely non-supervised approach because we don't know exactly whether there are some change points or not. We are not providing the model with any additional information. And here we can clearly see there is a decreasing, slightly decreasing trend, but there is no change point where we can say, okay, from this point on, the behavior changed in, in, in a way or another. So gaining some insight, whatever it is for the model, for the data, would be already useful for us. That being said, what we chose for the models is hybrid Bayesian networks. Bayesian networks are a sub-field uh, inside probabilistic graphical models and the fact that the, they are hybrid they mean, uh, that means that they incorporate both continuous and discrete variables. In this case, the, each uh, the Bayesian network can be specified in two ways, both with formulas, so mathematically on the, on the left, or by a direct acyclic graph on the right. Both are the same, although with the graph we lose the, um, the distributions of the variables. Here we will have a tau which is uniformly distributed from 1 to n being those the number of bits we have and this is a discrete uniform distribution and the idea is that the observed variable x which is the number of views will follow either one of two distributions. In this case the idea is to use the same distribution for both before and after the change point. In this case, we chose a Poisson model, and this Poisson model will have two different mean parameters, mu1 and mu2. And the idea is that uh, depending on the value of tau, we will choose one Poisson model with mu1 or the other with mu2. And it will be the data that influence or that corrects which is the correct distribution for tau, so that the two distributions represent the data the best. The problem with Poisson models is that they assume that the variance is equal to the mean. And we actually don't know whether that's the case or whether that's a correct assumption for this particular data set or for YouTube in general. So we also incorporate an alternative model, a negative binomial model, because here we have counting data. So all our x's are non-negative and are integers. That reduces the amount of distributions that we can use. Here the model is quite similar to the previous one, but the main difference is that we have an additional parameter alpha, which accounts for the spread of the distribution, which allow us more flexibly to model the mean and the variance differently from each other, which is not possible with the Poisson model. For the results, we use the root mean square error to check which model was best. But the focus should not lie on the number itself because we are not, as I said, uh, looking for a particular measure of error, but rather to interpret the model parameters and the model itself. So in this case, we can clearly see that the negative binomial was better than the Poisson under the same conditions. Removing the outliers reduced the error by half, although that's uh, expected. And the transformations we applied was uh, actually were neglectable. Here we apply some square root transformation, which is generally used for counting data. And as we can clearly see in the table, the negative binomial with no transformation performed the best uh, among all eight possibilities. So now I'm going to show you some of the uh, distributions, the posterior distributions or the mod or the parameter distributions for this best performing model. So the negative binomial with no transformation. First, I uh, will talk about the mu parameter. The mu parameter represents the mean of the data. And in this case, we have two, the mu1, which is before the change point, and the mu2, which is after the change point. We can see that the, mu's, the mu values are different, the distributions are not overlapping, suggesting that they are actually quite distinct from each other, 
and the mu1 is on the right so the the absolute values is are higher or greater than the mu2 that means that after the change point there was a reduction on average on the number of views per video and that reduction was about 80,000 80, views which is quite significantly quite significantly in this domain also the spread is different that's a characteristic of a negative binomial, although we are not seeing the distribution of alpha here. We can either indirectly see that because the spread of the two distributions is quite different. If we go to the tau parameter, so the change point, the posterior distribution exhibits some interesting characteristics. Namely, the first, so the prior we chose was uniformly distributed from 1 to 62, the number of total points. And here, the posterior is bounded between 29 and 48. So we reduce the range of the distribution. So we get a region, we can call that a transition region, where if there is a change point, this change point should lie in this region. Another interesting characteristic, which is actually not expected at all, is the multimodality. Because we have two particular modes here, in 37 and 42, which could represent several things, either two different change points or a transition region where all points are equally uh, important for the transition itself. But it is interesting to ask exactly what would happen here. If we combine this graph with the, with the previous, and instead of looking from the perspective of the model, we look from the perspective of the data, we can get the posterior plot, a posterior predictive plot. And here we can see the blue dots are the original data points and the dash black line is the expected number of views uh, given the model we fit, we fit. So here we can see that there is clearly a distinct region after the transition and another region before the transition where the, the parameters are quite stable and there is this transition zone, which is the region determined by the tau. In this particular region, there are, these are the two modes and we can clearly see that the mean reduces as we suspected with, from the posterior distribution from the mu's. So a good question would be what happened at 37 and 42. So right now there are no uh, known issues or, or things that happen at 37, but actually at 42, something interesting happened. And namely, there was a host chain in the program, and that actually um, end up changing the behavior of the audience. So in this case, the model was not provided with any kind of information for this particular change. So, uh, but still it was able to detect that change and with high accuracy. So that was basically the, the results so far and I would like to share some of the conclusions and future work. So the conclusions is that Bayesian networks uh, were proved to be useful in this new domain and it was also useful to see that they detected right, uh, at least with a high pr pr precision, and in a nurse supervised way, a change in the audience, which supposedly leads to the shutdown of the whole YouTube channel. And another important remark is that these results were good or, or good enough, even with very few data points. In this case, only with 62, which is particularly important today where all uh, models uh, currently uh, in, in trending are using big data and we, we need a thousand or hundreds of, of data points or even millions of data points here we can reach a pretty insightful conclusions even with less than a hundred points as a future work we would like to relax some of the assumptions at working with active channels or including the outliers inside the model we will also like to incorporate other variables, maybe also more complex variables, such as the sentiment in the comments or the duration of the video. And a natural next step will be to extension this to multiple change points. These are the references. Um, for more information, here you have the links for the slides, the code, the paper and the data set we use. Thank you very much for your attention.